ahead and pop. Oh, hello, and welcome to Citanium Mine. You just caught me crooning an old Fallout favorite there, uh, which uh, kind of makes sense because on this episode, we're going to be talking about Atomic Heart, which is also like an alternative history epic that's an open world with sort of a dystopian vibe to it. Although I should say that Atomic Heart has been compared more closely to something like a Bioshock, although we could also compare it to Wolfenstein New Order. They also kind of have the historic, alternate, uh, almost steampunky sort of feeling to them. And I uh, have to say that those are probably fair comparisons, although... At the end of the day, Atomic Heart falls a bit short. I have played it through to the end, and I did a lot of the additional content off the beaten path, and so I wanted to actually talk about it. Atomic Heart puts you in the shoes of Agent P3, a World War II veteran that has been asked to assist a Russian high command in the rollout of Collective 2.0 at Facility 3826. Dr. Dmitry Seshinov has uh, started this Collective 2.0 program in order to allow all citizens of the USSR to control these amazing automatons, robots, that are around uh, in a way that uh, will service them in what he sees as sort of a post-labor world. Now, I'm going to address the big controversy about the game before I do anything else, because a lot of people said that this is very pro-Russia, and... I, I don't know. I'm kind of two minds about this. So when you first start the game, it's set in the USSR and it is set in 1955. You go through what is indeed communist Russia and everything is bright and shiny and an old school version of futurism that you see right up at the front. And from that perspective, when you first get into it, it definitely does seem... Uh, very interested in, like, the old USSR Soviet comrade sort of framing of the world. The problem with that narrative, though, is about 10 minutes into the game, everything goes tremendously wrong, and the remainder of the game is pretty much showing you that this ideology doesn't really work that well. You could say that if it weren't for a handful of bad actors, that it would probably be perfectly fine. But then again, isn't a handful of bad actors being able to subvert your entire system kind of a problem anyway? Doesn't that show the failure of the system in its entirety? And when you see the absolute massacred numbers of people that are around this world and the haywire robots that you have to inevitably fight and the subversion that the people on the top are doing because, let's face it, you pretty much know how the story is going to run about an hour into the game, it doesn't really seem like they're promoting much, and if they are, they're not doing a very good job. Some people have said that it is a Russian developer, and therefore support of it would be in opposition to Ukraine, since there's a war going on there, as we're all fully aware. I don't know about that either, because if you were to watch the credits, which I did since I finished the game, you would see that there are even people in Ukraine that worked on the game. There were Ukrainian units involved. Actually, there was a lot of people in the international community that did. So if it is Russian propaganda, I don't think it did a very good job because, frankly, I, I, I didn't come away from this thinking that uh, communism or the USSR was particularly great. It didn't make me want to pick up a hammer and sickle anytime soon. So the basic game is where your Agent P3, who's just uh, angry at everything for no understandable reason, and seems very dismissive of everyone he talks to, he's a joy, and his AI partner, Charles, who is a glove, and uh, the glove basically allows him to have a form of, let's say, plasmids, if we're going with the Bioshock equivalent. Those plasmids allow him to do a, a wide variety of things, uh, including, you know, levitating people up in the air and creating freezing and shocking effects, etc. Uh, you also get a whole host of guns that you can utilize in the game, and you can craft them. There is a very robust crafting system that I'll talk about in a second. 
uh, because you are going to need them for the myriad of different robots that are going to come at you. In terms of the aesthetics, it's uh, an interesting world that they've built with Atomic Heart. You get this feeling of a paradise that has been very quickly disrupted. All of the robots that you deal with seem like they had some function that didn't involve trying to kill you. You do realize by the end that people who developed them were also aware of how they could be utilized to kill you. So, you know, I, I guess multitaskers, there's something. Facility 3826 is pretty explorable. You know, you can really go around and, and explore it as more of an open world. And I think that this is really where it sets itself apart from like a Bioshock or a Wolfenstein. Uh, it feels a little bit more like Fallout in that regard. Although I think I'm probably giving Atomic Heart too much credit. It doesn't really do as much as a Fallout does and have as much rich lore as Fallout does. And in terms of thematic elements or even character development, it doesn't do as much as Wolfenstein or Bioshock. Uh, however, it does have some interesting ideas. There are all of these little training facilities that you can go down to unlock special blueprints for mods on your guns uh, that will update them, and you can do that at any time at your leisure. The open world isn't necessarily as utilized as I would have liked. You see a lot of kind of sparse land where you're just traversing from point A to point B, and there's not a ton in the middle of it. And the thing that will eventually annoy you is that enemies will continually drop in on alarms. Uh, this is something that gets really frustrating uh, because I erupted from the starting facility where you get into the open world and at this cabin I had to fight some robots and then the alarms go off and they just start trying to regenerate all of the robots that I killed and more keep dropping in and so I just ended up being there for probably a good hour constantly trying to make more ammunition and uh, keep firing away at everything that kept coming at me just so that I could get out of the cabin and move on to the next area. So that could have probably been better paced. <laughs> a lot of the larger bosses in the game too are, are pretty damage spongy. So it's probably a good thing that you have a versatile arsenal at your disposal. And this is where the crafting system comes in. In true communist fashion, there is no actual, like, currency that you use in the game. Basically, what you're utilizing are parts and pieces. You use those to craft your weaponry, and you also use them to craft mods. You also collect polymer, and polymer is sort of the default currency so that you can upgrade your uh, not plasmids, <laughs> but your personal abilities and your stats, your health, etc. like that. The thing that's really nice about the upgrade system is that it's very forgiving. Uh, any points that you spend, any resources that you put into modifications will all be refunded to you like 100% in full when you decide to trade them out for something else. You can break stuff down for the same cost that you put into it. You can also uh, refund all of your polymer if you want to take something out of one line of advancement and put it into another one. They basically do not penalize you at all for trying to expand your repertoire and you can just go right back in and change it out immediately. It's kind of nice. You start to realize that some enemies are more averse to fire or shock, and this does have to do with organic or robotic characters as well. You find out about, like, an outbreak, which then starts to make a lot of these, like, humans that were infected with a biological disease, so now it feels a little bit like Last of Us got involved. There's a lot of ideas floating around in here. Props to them to at least pick good series to <clears throat> borrow from. 
but it did feel strikingly similar to some things that I've played in the past. Atomic Heart is a really interesting title because on the one hand, I felt compelled to play it to the end. It was interesting enough that I wanted to do that and had enough things to keep me engaged. But at the same time, I could recognize immediately when they would introduce stuff that there were other games that did it better in the past. So not something that I'd revisit, but something that I had a good enough time playing while I was playing it. Now, I'm going to just tell you right now, without spoiling the end game in case you end up playing it, the, the end game and the messages around it start to get a, a lot more muddled, and the choices that they give you are pretty much an either-or. Pretty much, do you want to go and deal with the final boss, or do you want to just walk away? That's the choice that you get to make right at the end. Nothing that you've done up to that point really informs that decision for you, and there is definitely a lack of choice throughout the game that affects what happens to your character, P3, by the end. It's pretty much laid out for you. Saying that it is reminiscent of Bioshock is really a kind of a surface-level comparison. While a lot of the systems in the game work perfectly fine and will keep you relatively engaged, it all feels a little lackluster at the end. Not nearly as fleshed out or satisfying as games that it is being compared to. And that is not great. If you're going to get compared to another game, especially one of the greatest games that has ever been made, with Bioshock, by the way, is what I'm referring to, you really gotta add something revolutionary to the table, especially considering that Bioshock is like practically 15 years old now and would still hold up much better under scrutiny. There's a lot of tedious elements to it. The crafting, like I said, is is fun, but also the amount of combat that you have to do is just endless. The constantly regenerating enemies is annoying uh, and you start to just get tired of going into a place and having to fight a near endless stream of enemies until you walk away. There are a handful of different abilities that you can utilize in order to deal with the robots and such, but <laughs> you start to realize that there's really only like one or two that you could really utilize to any effect. Uh, for me, I realized that the shock, which is what you get anyway and has actual utility in the game, is kind of a necessity. And then besides that, there is a uh, massive gravity well that you can do, which will just like lift all of your enemies up in the air, do damage to them, and then eventually you get the ability to like chuck them down into the ground for massive amounts of damage. Besides that, I didn't really see a reason to invest points in much else. I think I did the polymer shield at some point because, I mean, I just had a bunch of polymer at that point to invest, and I was like, might as well. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. I would definitely suggest playing on PC rather than playing on console. It's just not built for the controller. It's definitely built more for a keyboard and mouse layout when you are playing the game. But unfortunately, like from the heroes to the villains to the landscape, it all feels like a AAA game, but doesn't really realize itself as a AAA game and falls short in almost every single way. It's sort of the uncanny valley of the immersive sims that you might be used to. It doesn't give you the amount of choice in how you deal with situations. It doesn't give you real incentive to play certain ways so that you can get the good ending or the bad ending. It removes a lot of the things that you might be looking for in a similar title, but it still has enough shades of it that you might be satisfied with it. Me personally, though, I felt a little underwhelmed by the end. Okay, so in games that I would recommend instead of Atomic Heart, I've already mentioned it. It would be Bioshock. Just go, just go play Bioshock. 
you play Wolfenstein New Order. That's also really great. Or, hey, hey, Fallout New Vegas. You're looking for the open world aspect. You can do that. Go play those games. Those, those are great games. Those, those are excellent. Real interesting. Great character development. Interesting stories. A lot of philosophical questions that they open up. A lot of interesting tales to be told. Go, go play those. Yeah, that's all I had to say. All right, so I uh, have replaced my organic heart with an atomic heart now, but I regret the decision. So thank you for joining us on Citanium Mine. Uh, enjoy your cart ride back up to the surface dwellers. I have made the cart particularly steampunky for you. You're going to love it. Absolutely love it. It, it works exactly the same way as a normal cart does. However, it, um, it has extra stuff on it that makes it look futuristic. It's a little underwhelming. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, did you left? Okay, that that's fine.